What's up everyone, I am back with another video. If this is your first time hearing my voice or seeing my face, please go check out the other things on my channel. My name is Jerome McRoy. I am 24 as of now, or I guess this year. Well, no, last year, my bad. This is our art entertainment slash social commentary channel. Please like, share, comment, pop that bubble and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell down below because it helps me out a lot. And also the stuff over there is really fun, so go check it out with the rest of the members. And let's just get into it. Before anything, spoilers, I just want to make sure everybody understands that there are spoilers within this video. So we have Tom Hiddleston, or is it Tom Hiddleston? No, it's Tom Hiddleston because it's Owen at the end. We have Tom Hiddleston back as Loki in his own Disney Plus series. This series starts off with the results of Endgame's mission to gain the Tesseract from Loki, which obviously was happening in Endgame, which... Hopefully you went to go watch because I'm not going to be talking about Endgame. So, yeah, go and do that. Which required the Avengers to go back in time to change the present. And in doing so, Loki gained the Tesseract, expelling him into a different time, separating him from the main timeline, and he is eventually met with the TVA and taken into custody. The TVA stands for Team... I said Team. <laughs> the TVA stands for Time... God damn it. The TVA stands for Time Variance Authority, which controls the main timeline and the Nexus events that splinter off from the original, which obviously is the original timeline that we're in now. Nexus events are timelines that occur when they're not supposed to, so we think throughout this series, well, stick a pin in that for a moment, just a moment. Okay, subjects that splinter off course can either be nixed allowing them to exist outside the timeline with no consequences, or prune, which is removing them completely from the timeline altogether. In Loki's case, he was next, meaning that he never experienced being killed by Thanos, but his variant did. Does that make sense to everybody? Meaning that he never experienced dying by Thanos, and that Loki that died is a completely, well, not a completely different Loki, just a like it's a it's a different loki though so yeah he just hasn't gone through any of the growth yet because loki is a bit insufferable just a little bit eh. i mean it could be debated but mm, loki's kind of a bitch so i ah mobius is the first employee we see conversing with loki on a deeper level so just with everything said and done, Mobius is the first person to actually interact with him during the whole, like, I don't know, time he was in custody for the TVA. And Mobius kind of explains to Loki that he is meant to be alone and that his sole purpose is to cause mischief, never to be altered and never to be altered and is the same across all variants. So basically he is pretty much ain't shit across any other Loki variant in the entire timeline or multiverse, which honestly really made me mad because when someone is trying to change for the most part, and obviously I know there's some, there are some bad deeds that are worse than others, but I think in this case, Loki has tried to change and they're basically saying to a molecular level, you are trash. And you don't deserve to change. You don't deserve happiness because you don't, that's not what you were meant to be. Your sole purpose is to cause mischief. Your sole purpose is to call people, cause people sorrow. Loki contemplates about the situation and disagrees altogether. Why is he destined to be alone and never to have the opportunity to change, obviously? We then meet Ravana, or Ravan, I think her name is Ravana, who is essentially the head of the TVA, which again is time variance. No, time variant authority. Yes. Stern, brash, ugly, has an attitude, well, pretty ugly attitude. Although if the actor is playing their part, when they can invoke emotion out of you, they're doing their job. They are definitely doing their job. We eventually learn that there's a Loki variant killing other members of the TVA. That Loki specifically is Sylvie, which is a female Loki ripped from her ultimate timeline. That's an ultimate timeline. The female Loki is ripped from her timeline by Ravana. When she's ripped from her timeline, she's probably all of maybe 11 or 12. She may have been 10, but obviously she was pretty young. We're not clear 
on what her Nexus event was about or what it actually is. And Ravana in the series even says like, I don't remember and I don't particularly care, which her ass should have got fucking killed. But I'm just going to leave that for another day. And I'm going to let y'all talk about that down in the comments. But we also can come to the conclusion that she got pruned. She got pruned from her timeline. But before Sylvie could be pruned by Ravon and the TVA um, people, I guess, or the the court, the TVA court case, whatever, she stole Ravana's teleporting pad, or I think she stole a teleporting pad from one of the guards and basically left, seeking to kill the timekeepers when she comes back. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of context as to what is actually happening and just filling in some main points, I guess. So in this particular case, there is quite a bit of time that passes within the TVA, not within the TVA, obviously, of, or of course, but in the main timeline. So when Sylvie actually escapes, that's like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years of her kind of jumping from timeline to timeline and her being able to like age up in what in some way, shape, or form, obviously. And she eventually runs into Loki because Mobius, because Mobius obviously trusts Loki. And Loki's like, you, you know, you don't have anything better else to do. So why don't you trust me? So they go to this this like market timeline that has a Nexus event. That's why everybody died um, within that timeline that splintered off. And obviously, when the TVA members go into these splintered off timelines, it is meant to be pruned, meaning once the timeline is destroyed, it is no longer altering the main timeline, if that makes sense. Hopefully, that makes sense because, no, it should make sense because I was a bit confused when I was watching it, but it kind of came together um, in kind of like the middle of the, I almost said a movie, the, the show itself. But while they're at this little marketplace, he eventually starts fighting with Sylvie. Sylvie's actually whooping his ass like completely. She kind of dogs him out. I wouldn't even say it was like a full fight. Like it was a slight altercation and then he got beat up. And he she's basically going to disrupt the main timeline and allowing it to like splinter off into different timelines to confuse the TBA so they don't know where she's at and that will give her enough time to go into the kill <laughs> to go and kill the timekeepers that yes 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 she's gonna go and do that but before she can do that she actually gets pushed or not pushed she actually goes to a different timeline to hide she hides the nexus events because it doesn't alter it because ultimately it's going to be destroyed loki follows her and they have a whole discussion and there's a really cool part where Sylvie just looks at him because he broke the teleporting pad and she's like, fuck you, fuck you. Like, I'm like, why, why, like what, what, why? Loki's like, well, I was trying to help. She's like, I didn't need your help. I didn't need your help. And so, you know, they get to know each other. And at the end of that kind of like, I don't know, debacle, because they were supposed to get out of the Nexus event. And they thought they were going to die. The rocket ship actually blew up. And Sylvie has this really priceless look on her face that's just like, I'm fucking done. Like, why am I here? And she just walks away. It's not even like a, she sits there and falls on her knees and starts crying. Or she like goes to Loki and hugs him or like looks at him with teary eyes. She just... She just like walks away and it's just a very iconic scene and they have a heart to heart and they, fi they finally find Loki and Sylvie because there was something that was being altered and they basically called Loki egotistical because he likes himself. But if you really think about it, he's the only one that has ever made him, he's the only one that has ever made himself feel better about himself in some way, shape, or form, because, you know, other people haven't, and so they're about to, like, I don't know, kiss, kind of, or accept their fates, and then the TVA teleports them back, they get into a whole debacle, and they're fighting, Mobius basically tells, I think Mobius told Loki 
that they had pruned Sylvie and he Loki was just like, wow, I thought we were friends. He didn't say that, but he that's how he looked at him. And Mobius was like, I thought we were friends too until you betrayed me. And he's just like, and then, you know, we get further into the show and we're kind of talking about morality around killing variants and what that actually means and why can't other timelines exist because they deserve to exist just like the main timeline. And it's actually a really interesting discussion. Now we have to talk about the end time, which is the end of the end of time, which is basically where everything is dumped or where people, when people get pruned, that is where people get set or sent, not set. And other Loki variants were there. And we see an older, we see an older, much wiser Loki that is really strong, actually. So it's really interesting kind of how they, um, kind of how they do that, per se. And they have to fight this giant monster thing called Alive. Or, yeah, I think it's Alive. And Sylvie and Loki are trying to basically kill it. And they were able to. And so they were left with seeing the very fantastical, majestic um, castle of the Timekeeper. And it's this little cyborg robot thing. It's not a cyborg. It's like a little computer program that pops up every here and there. uh, Every now and then. And... She pops up to them and she's like, you know, we can put you, you know, we can put you guys in your own timeline and, you know, you can rule it the way you want to. And we won't prune it and we won't nix it or anything like that. And Loki's like, you know, maybe, maybe that's something that we should think about. Sylvie's looking at him like, bitch, stop playing with me. I know why I came. Do not let them alter our decisions. I'm killing the timekeeper. And Loki's like, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. And they finally meet Kang. Yeah, they finally meet Kang. And Kang's just talking about how he founded the multiverse and that he exists in other timelines. And if he doesn't discover it, another another person will, which is himself, or that's at least the assumption. And throughout that, the common denominator, the common denominator, the common denominator within that conversation was, is he lying or not? I think that Kang was telling the truth to some degree, but I do think that he was lying about a few things. Specifically him, I do think that he exists across other timelines. I don't think that he's always going to be the one to found to found the multiverse. But maybe, you know, I might be wrong. And Loki and Sylvie are basically having a discussion and Sylvie's like, I'm not letting up. I know what I came here to do and this is my decision and this is what I want to do. And honestly, I was with Sylvie. I'm like, you came there to do one thing and one thing only, which was kill the timekeeper. And Loki and Sylvie start like kind of boxing or whatever. And Sylvie kisses Loki and and Luke and Loki. Who's Loki? Loki falls for it and she like basically pops him through another time, another timeline at the TVA because the Mobius and another person don't remember him. So that was really funny. And Sylvie's just left with a timekeeper. And I really want to talk about this part because it was really interesting to me. Like it was really interesting because she ends up killing him. She ends up like flat out just killing him. And the reason why I like it so much is because so so many times, especially with, with like American TV shows and why anime and American TV social TV shows are so different is because the 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 behavior, the the acting out of emotions in some way shape or form. And so with Sylvie Syl- Sylvie is mad, she's angry, she's hurt and that was able to fester for a really, really long time. And it's not like they were genuine about it when they eventually met her when she was older. They were just like, yeah, we're still going to prune your ass. She's like, well, fuck you. And when she's talking to Kang, she's like, why would you let them prune me? Why would you let them do this? And he was like, grow up. Like, I'm trying to keep the the multiverse intact. And he's like, I understand that you're mad, but now that I explain it, doesn't that change anything? And she's like, no, no, it doesn't. 
and she stabs him in his chest and you know he's laughing and whatever and he slowly dies but with anime you know it they're able to act out their behavior in a way where we don't really see with american tv shows a lot of the time especially with like avatar specifically when uh katara went with zuko to find the murderer of her mom personally i'm on the side that katara should have killed him flat out and just been done like that would have just been that would just would have been it like she i think she would have been satisfied if she had just killed him and been done but instead what american culture likes to do or taking the high road as they say it's hard to be the bigger person i'm not gonna lie and other times you could be the bigger person and the same timeline will still play out it will still play out And so I like that the show Loki really dived deep into the concept of, well, what if I don't want to be the bigger person? What if I want to just do this right now because they did it to me? And that's what Sylvie did. With anime, they explore hatred. They explore revenge. They explore vengeance. They explore emotions that American culture is kind of afraid to talk about and just a lot and just a lot of other things too and that's what i can appreciate about anime although anime is not filtered the way american uh culture tv shows are so it's a little bit different and obviously this is a very nuanced conversation i think favorite character for sure probably would have had to been i really liked mobius and i really liked sylvie And I really appreciate Tom Hiddleston's performance within the show. And it's going to be getting a season two. But let me know your thoughts on the Loki show and what you thought. And are you excited for season two? But that is all, everyone. Pop that bubble and subscribe. Like, share, comment. Check out the other things on my channel. And also hit the notification bell down below because YouTube is not letting you know when I post. And it would greatly help me out. But I will see everyone later and deuces.